Now let's talk about the components in system flow. So components are the base building blocks of uh, all the websites that you're gonna create with system flow. We create components so that you can easily edit them and we use all the system flow classes so that everything stays consistent in terms of class naming and spacing and colors and typography across all of the components. Here you have the names of all the components, hero left one image, for example, and you have all the components in the sy symbols library, in the components li library of uh, Webflow. Now, this is not super useful because uh, obviously if you know the name of the component, you can easily search for it, but Usually I just use the docs to search for the appropriate component. So I scroll the docs and if I want to use some pricing, I'm gonna go to pricing page, click on the name of this component. And now the name is copied to the clipboard so I can easily press command E in Webflow to search and now paste and use the first component on the list because this is basically the same naming convention here. It's pretty important to keep your mouse away from this uh, dialog box because uh, when you have the mouse somewhere in here, let's say, it will automatically select this input basic icon left component instead of pricing, pricing basic two, just because your mouse is here and it will automatically select this component. If you press return, it will insert wrong component. So. What I really recommend is just, you know, moving your mouse cursor further away this search box, then command V pasting the component name and pressing return to just place it on the canvas. And uh, the very important concept of components is that you have an instance of the component on the page and you also have the master uh, version of the component. When you press edit here or you double click on the component, you basically go to the master definition of this component. Now, if you make changes to this component, it will result in changes in all of the component instances. If you uh, place this component again on the second page, then those changes will affect all of the components. So if you, let's say, delete this body text under uh, the option for zero, zero dollars, then if you want to place another component like this, pricing basic two, it won't have this text. But usually what you want to do is not to modify the master component, you want to modify the instances. So this particular instance of the component, and you don't want those changes to affect all of the other instances. Then you just right click on the element and select unlink instance. You can also press shift command A and now it's no longer green. It is no longer the instance of this component. It's just as if you created this element on Webflow, um, in Webflow Navigator at the elements. If I delete this text and then I check whether this text is still in the master component, you can see that it is. So I've deleted this element, this particular text below the price only from the instance that I unlinked. So this is no longer connected, you might say, to this master component. However, there is a little twist, and you know that twist if you know Webflow well, it's that those components that you have are not only necessarily linked together with the component feature, but they are linked together with classes that appear in every component and we happen to have the same classes for every component, for the headers, for the body text, for the background colors, for everything. So that even if you unlink this component, it will still have the same classes as all of the other components, uh, even not unlink from the instances. So you might want to modify the entire component so that every future instance that you uh, in insert on into your project is now different and then you modify the master, especially in terms of, of uh, the HTML styles. But if you want to modify CSS, you can see that all the classes are the same. So heading large is still in here. So heading L is the class of this um, unlinked instance for the pricing header, but also it's it exists in the component. So it means that if I change the color, for example, to primary 60, it will obviously change across the instances and master components and all the other components too, although this is no longer linked. And this will happen simply because we use the same classes. If you want to change it only in one instance, you'd have to modify the class. You'd have to add some specific combo class to this unlinked instance of H uh, of header two Excel, and then you might be able to do it. But 
for the component itself, if you modify HTML and you want uh, this uh, to be inherited to all of the future instances, do it in the master component. If you modify styles such as colors, for example, let's do it for the button. Again, let's edit this class and save it. You can do it whenever you want, wherever you want, and uh, this will affect all of the system flow elements because we try to be consistent and everything base, uh, is based on those classes. So mm, this is why uh, unlinking the uh, instances is not really harmful to your workflow. And, uh, and this is really, really useful. So usually I just uh, put the components on the canvas and then the first thing I do is just unlink all the instances and still I can edit the properties and still this will be consistent across the framework. Editing the master component is not really that, you know, usable in uh, system flow, but obviously there are some cases in which you'd like to keep it that way. And there's also another way that you can use to modify the components. You don't really have to uh, unlink them because unlinking is another, you know, thing that you have to do, right click, unlink the element. But for some components that we've created, you don't really have to, uh, you, you just want to adjust some basic properties. For example, the URL for the button. And this is available as overrides. So we've created a lot of different overrides for our uh, components so that you don't have to unlink them to change, let's say the URL for the button and the text for the button. So here you have the text that you can easily change here or um, in the settings pane, you can uh, apply you can change the button text to whatever you wish and this still stays as uh, the button component don't have to unlink it if you click on show all settings it's available also here in the element settings or if you press d on the keyboard and some basic settings you can uh, apply for most of our components some basic components we have them available for you as overrides if you want to change it further you just right click and unlink the instance and now you can go wild with this button and uh, adjust uh, every setting that you have in here. So change the styling or maybe manipulate with uh, the classes and stuff like this. You see that there is a button class and also medium combo class. If you want to change this button style, you can either use the pre-existing classes or you can just, you know, uh, make your own classes on top of that and change styling. Now, for example, for let's say avatars, we also have uh, this overrides for images. So you don't need to unlink it to change the image. Uh, there is a uh, name for the avatar, so you can say John Doe, and also the second line is uh, present here in the override. So it's really, really easy to change the basic settings for, for those simple components. For most uh, more uh, sophisticated components, usually you'd have to unlink them uh, first because we there's no use to just make all of the overrides, especially for like bulleted uh, lists or something like that. But But for most of them, uh, you'll be just fine using the overrides. And this will also help you in cases like this one, when we have navbar, and probably you'd like to unlink the instance of navbar component so that you can work more convenient, more convenient way. But in this navbar component, we have another component, which is brand logo, and it's nested component. So you can unlink the navbar component easily and still the brand logo will stay as a component. And especially for this one, this is important because inside you have the image. And important thing here is that you don't want to create an override to change it. So you don't really want to create choose image here and change it only as an override to this one instance. Well, unless you do, but in most cases, what you'd like to do is just go inside this component and edit the master component. So I want to change this image. And from here, I want to choose the um, second image that I have. And now you can see that this is nested component in all of our nav bars and menus and everywhere. And now it changes according, uh, accordingly to your uh, adjustment. So thanks to nested components, you can work really efficiently and you can easily unlink the things that you want to quickly modify and tweak and uh, still you'll have the power of changing things uh, such as images, not necessarily having them as CSS backgrounds. And yeah, this is how it works. So components and nested components as well as overrides and unlinking, those are the most important and crucial parts of system flow uh, framework. And I hope you understand it. I recommend you to check out the um, flow that I've shown you in this lesson and experiment with that. And I'll see you in the next one.